Hello and welcome to the Counting Line Analytic Tutorial. Over the course of this short film you will learn how the analytic works, what it does and the correct way to calibrate it for the best possible results. We will see later on how to fine tune the analytic for maximum accuracy, but for now let's look at the basics. To introduce you to the product, here is the analytic fully set up and successfully counting people on a wide footpath. Most importantly, you should notice that the camera is mounted in an overhead position, facing the ground and at a close to vertical angle. We will explore the on-screen elements that are making the counting line function in a later clip. Before we do that, here is the analytic uncalibrated counting people in a town centre. Please note that the counter has been set up to work in two directions. Also note that because the analytic is uncalibrated, groups of people walking side by side through the counting line are being counted as one person. In this next clip the counting line has been calibrated so that wide objects are counted as more than one. As the people pass over the line the counter numbers are changing and furthermore when groups of people cross the counting line side by side, unlike in the previous clip, they are being counted correctly. This clip quite simply shows the analytic working in a fully calibrated state. This is essentially so you can see the different elements of the analytic being highlighted on screen. Each one will be explained more later, but for now you can see what every part of the visual display does and where the different parts are. Now we have moved on to another application. As can be seen here, the counting line works equally well for counting vehicles. In this case we are monitoring five lanes of traffic with a single counting line, but the system could be set up just as successfully to monitor the same five lanes with five separate lines and five separate counters. As you can see on this slide, for the greatest achievable accuracy, the camera should be facing the ground as close to 90 degrees as possible. The reason for this is because looking straight down, the analytic can see the spaces between the objects following one behind the other, in this case people, and recognizes them as separate individuals. The lower the angle, the more the profiles of the two people are likely to overlap and the visible gap is to disappear. That is why the counting line position in the left hand picture is better than in the right, because the angle is steeper. That wraps up camera setup, so let us move on to how to calibrate a counting line. Firstly, within the menu, make sure you have selected VCA, then the Zones and Rules tab. Now let's make a counting line. Right click anywhere on the screen, then move the mouse over Zone slash Line, and then Create Line. The uncalibrated counting line will appear on screen. Drag it so it is facing the direction you require, and then move the mouse over the right hand side of the screen. We are going to count people moving up, so direction A is up. Then we move on to the width calibration, so make sure that that box is checked as well. Click apply and the line is now functional. Next we need to add the counter. Right click on the screen again, then select counter, followed by add counter, and an uncalibrated counter will appear on the screen. Move to the top right hand side again, change the colour and the name if you want to, then check the increment zero box. A drop down list will appear. Select the counting direction you want, in this case direction A, then click apply and the counter is now functional. Finally, let's set the width calibrator, which must be set to the width of the objects to be counted. The woman on the left will be a perfect example, so I have paused the video and adjusted the large calibration marks to match the width of the woman. Now stretch the line fully across the screen because we want to count the whole footpath, click apply one last time and watch it working. Please note that the analytic is recognizing the passers by as people, couples or groups, but still counting them individually. Here is the great advantage of proper calibration. This slide is to explain the details of the width calibrator. Screenshot 1 shows you the different parts of the width calibrator, with the 50, 100 and 150% width marks shown. When an object registers less than 50%, it will not be counted, as can be seen with the motorbikes in screenshot 2. 
objects that register between 50% and 150% are counted as one, as seen in screenshot 3, and over 150% will be counted as two or more depending on the size, as you can see in screenshot 4. You should now know the basics, so let's move on to how to improve the accuracy of the analytic. As you can clearly see on this slide, the most efficient way to eliminate errors and improve accuracy is by counting a sample group of at least 100 people or vehicles with the analytic, then counting the same group manually with a tally counter, as shown on screen, or by simply using old-fashioned pen and paper. By doing this, you can see whether the line is counting high or low, and calibrate the width accordingly. Let's see that in action. Here you can see the analytic calibrated for counting cars on a freeway. This clip is a sample of exactly 100 vehicles according to the analytic, which, as you can see, I have skipped forward in the middle to save you some time. However, you can see that the count starts at 3 and finishes at 103. In a perfect world, that would be that, but in this case, after conducting a manual count, I found that the counting line's number was slightly too low by just four vehicles. As you can see now on the screen, this means that the width calibrator was set ever so slightly too wide. Particularly thin vehicles were registering less than the 50% markers and therefore were not being counted. I recalibrated the width to make it slightly narrower, and the counts were then the same. This took only a few minutes and increased the accuracy by 4%. Next, let's look at light and the effect that that can have on accuracy. Here you can see the analytic calibrated to count people walking down a narrow corridor and passing in both directions. The heavy shadows created by the overhead spotlights are not a problem in this case. However, for areas where there are very dark shadows or very bright reflections, the width calibrator should be set slightly too wide and the counting line will compensate for the light effects. This slide explains how to deploy counting line where there are very wide entrances and large volumes of people will be passing through at the same time. This is often an issue in retail or public transport applications and these three diagrams clearly show where problems can arise and the best ways to solve them. The problem can be seen in image 1 where the people at the side will not be counted properly because of the low camera angle. This can be solved by either raising the height of the camera, image 2, or by using multiple cameras to monitor the flow in lanes separated by a physical barrier, in image 3. The last issue, which can be very confusing when using counting line, are the bounding boxes and lines from the tracker algorithm, which may be running at the same time as counting line. If you are not concerned by the tracker output, then the best thing to do is to disable it to avoid confusion. Firstly, move to the right hand side of the screen and turn the presence filter off. To simply switch the display off, right click on screen, select display, and then uncheck the tick boxes. Alternatively, to disable the display and the underlying tracker completely, go to the Enable Disable tab under VCA on the left-hand menu. That now concludes the tutorial. Hopefully it has helped you understand the Counting Line Analytic tool well enough to use it successfully. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.